while not the wealthiest monarch. Queen Elizabeth II's collection extended beyond castles. From a back colony to a tiara adorned with 1,333 diamonds. This is the intriguing side of the world's longest reigning monarch's possessions. Queen Elizabeth technically owned, or at least co-owned, all of the unclaimed mute swans on open water in England and Wales, though she only exercised her ownership on certain stretches of the Thames and its surrounding tributaries. She shared ownership of the birds with the Worshipful Company of Vintners and the Worshipful Company of Dyers, an arrangement that dates back to the 15th century, when the animals were considered a delicacy. Each year, they are counted during a five-day event known as the Swan Upping. Owned by each successive British monarch, the ownership of the birds has since passed to King Charles III. From dolphins to whales, the Queen got a solid claim on many of the country's aquatic creatures. A statute from the 12th century, which originated during the reign of King Edward II, stated that the King shall have wreck of the sea throughout the realm over whales and sturgeons taken in the sea or elsewhere within the realm, except in certain places privileged by the King. The law still stands today and covers not just dolphins and whales, but sturgeons and porpoises, too, when they are captured within three miles of the United Kingdom. Cityscapes were not the only real estate in the Queen's portfolio. The Crown Estate also owns half of the coastline around England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It is held by the Crown Estate in right to the Crown, that is, for a reigning monarch, and is neither a property of the government, nor the monarch's private estate, but is to be passed down to generations. It was rare that the queen would need access to cash. But, if the need arose, she did have a private ATM in the basement of Buckingham Palace, courtesy of Cotts Bank. The ATM, however, was, and still is, strictly for members of the royal family only. The Queen's position put her in charge of the royal collection, one of the world's largest and most impressive art collections. Although she didn't own it personally, it was held in trust by her. Of the million-plus pieces included in the collection are approximately 150,000 artworks from some of the great masters like Rembrandt, Rubens, and Raphael. While some of these pieces are displayed in museums or otherwise made available for public viewing, many of them hang in royal palaces and estates. Horses had long been one of the Queen's great passions, though it was beyond riding them. She was also a savvy investor when it came to racehorses, and is said to have had approximately 30 horses in training. As of late 2017, her impressive roster of racehorses had earned her close to $9 million with their 451 race wins. Her first victory came in 1949, when Monavan, a horse she co-owned with her mom, won at Fontwell Park. Any queen worth her castle has got a great tiara. But Elizabeth had a lot of them. Among the many pieces of glittering headgear she inherited is the diamond diadem, which might have been her most famous piece of jewelry. It's set with 1,333 diamonds, including a four-carat yellow diamond in the center. While the Queen wore it to every state opening of Parliament since 1952, the piece was originally made for George IV, to wear at his lavish 1,821 coronation. Queen Elizabeth was obviously a devoted animal lover, which might explain why she did not mind sharing Balmoral Castle with the colony of Pipistrel bats that had taken up residence in the property's main hall. She apparently liked to catch them with a butterfly net as they darted around her summer home. 
Weighing in at 530.2 carats, the Great Star of Africa, properly known as Cullinan 1, after South African mining magnate Sir Thomas Cullinan, is the world's largest clear-cut diamond, worth somewhere in the region of $51 million. In 1910, it and several other stones cut from a gigantic diamond unearthed in South Africa five years earlier were presented to Mary of Tech, the consort of George V and Elizabeth II's grandmother. Back in the United Kingdom, the diamond was incorporated into the sovereign scepter with cross, the three-foot-long staff held by the monarch during their coronation. As such, the diamond is now part of the crown jewels which technically remain under the ownership of the crown. The queen had her own coat of arms and various rules and regulations governed the use of the Britain's Union Jack and the Royal Standard Flag in her presence. But she also had her own personal flag, depicting a crowned letter E in a circle of roses on a navy blue background which the royal household opted to use on any building or vehicle in which the queen was staying or traveling. Reportedly, the flag was designed in 1960 at the queen's own request to symbolize her as an individual, separate from her role as sovereign or head of state. The queen had been presented with and held four Guinness World Record titles. She was officially the world's longest reigning queen, the world's oldest reigning monarch, the world's wealthiest queen, and appeared on the money of more sovereign countries than any other person. The Crown Estate, which holds properties and estates in trust for the Crown, owns around a quarter of a million acres of rural land across the United Kingdom, most of which is used or leased for agriculture and mineral extraction. Around 8% of the Crown's rural holdings are forested, meaning the Queen owned and controlled roughly 25,000 acres of British woodland. The Queen also owned the rights to all of Scotland's gold mining activities and had a right to sell them. However, these rights have since passed to King Charles III in right to the Crown.